All right. Um, welcome, everybody. How are you today? How's the conference doing? Is it doing great? Yeah? I'm glad to hear that. So, um, yeah, thank you for, for joining my presentation about Micronaut. So, a little bit about myself. My name is Alvaro Sánchez. Um, I'm coming from, from Madrid, Spain. Um, I'm a Java developer since um, a few years ago. Uh, today, I'm working at Oracle Labs, working on Micronaut. A um, few things I'm contributing, especially build tooling, uh, Kubernetes support, cache, some documentation guides, etc. Uh, I've been working with Micronaut as a committer since the beginning. Uh, just some uh, curiosity about the project. Initially, the project wasn't called Micronaut, but instead was called um, Project Particle. That was the code name. Uh, but apparently, there was like a different IT project with that name, so we had to choose something else. And uh, my proposal was to, to name it um, Summer Framework, because uh, we all know that Summer is better than... Ah, uh, no, forget about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, Summer is better than something else. No, it's a joke. Um, yeah, so before we go into the presentation, I would like to know something about you. So how many of you have heard about Micronaut before? Raise your hands. Okay, not too bad. Is there any of you that are actually using it in production? Only one, yeah. Fair enough. Um, and how many of you are using Spring? Yeah, for for number. Uh, can you please leave the room? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, okay, so I will use uh, through the presentation some references to the Spring um, counterparts or or you know uh, similarities for you to to get an idea. Um, so for those of you who never heard about it. Uh, I've got three ideas for you to, to take from this uh, session and from Micronaut. One is that Micronaut is a modern Java framework, and it's modern because we started designing it in 2017. Uh, so we didn't have to carry many design decisions like other frameworks have to do. Uh, we could sit um, you know, on a, on a whiteboard and, and think, how should have a Java framework look like, uh, like, you know, for microservices and, and uh, the cloud and et cetera, right? So supporting the, the current um, uh, patterns and deployment options, et cetera. Uh, the second idea is uh, you can use Micronaut for all kinds of applications, right? So typic typically, people use it for, for microservices, server-side uh, applications, but you could use it for, for example, uh, Kafka consumers or producers which don't have a server. Um, uh, you could write CLI applications or, or even serverless. Uh, Micronaut is great for serverless for, uh, for a reason I will explain later. And the third idea, it is highly optimized. Uh, performance is really important for us. We, we spend a lot of time shaving milliseconds and megabytes from the startup time of your applications um, and the, you know, the memory consumption of your applications. So how will you do that? Uh, or you know, how might not differentiate from other frameworks like Spring or Jakarta IE? Uh, the main difference is that we try to do as many things as we can at build time in a, an approach or process which is called AOT, ahead of time uh, compilation, right? So unlike other frameworks where, you know, um, the majority of the magic happens at runtime, uh, at Micronaut, uh, we do as much as we can during build time using a Java facility called uh, Annotation Processing API, which is uh, like a hook into the compiler process where we take your source code and generate uh, bytecode during build time. 
Um, we mostly generate uh, bytecode. Uh, sometimes we also generate source code. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. So at build time, you, we generate like you know all dependency injection configuration, uh, injection as well, AOP proxies, like you know everything the framework needs to run your application. It's uh, computed at build time. So you will have slightly bigger build times, but dramatically smaller startup times. So at runtime, there's no reflection, there's no proxy generation, dynamic class loading. We don't scan your class path, your JAR files, your bytecodes, nothing, nada. Um, we support a wide variety of technologies, languages, build tools, clouds, uh, et cetera. So the idea is to, to understand that this is general purpose. Uh, like I said, we began in, in 2017, and uh, we've done a few releases. Uh, latest is 3.5, and uh, we're having uh, Micronaut 4 uh, before the end of the year uh, with the baseline of Java 17. And uh, we use, we use uh, semantic versioning to bring uh, stability and smooth upgrade paths to your applications. Um, Quick, um, quick roundup of uh, you know several features uh, you can use. So the core of the framework is obviously like a dependency injection, right? So you can use uh, the JSR 3CO annotations like at inject or um, at singleton. Uh, with the Jakarta, you can use like you know uh, Jakarta namespace. Uh, or you can use Spring annotations. Uh, and this is uh, interesting because um, mm, we not only support uh, Spring annotations for, for dependency injection, but for many other things, like, for instance, the, the REST layer. And what we do at build time is we map those Spring annotations into Micronaut ones. So at runtime, everything is uh, um, you know, uh, transparent to you. Um, there is a configuration system, so you can bring configuration uh, values from many different places, file formats, etc. Uh, validation support, uh, there is an AOP framework built in, uh, but unlike other implementations, it is compile time and reflection free. Uh, same for valid uh, validation. Uh, like the biggest feature, right? The HTTP server, so how to, how to write um, REST applications. Uh, Micronaut uses a notation-based programming model, uh, the very same as Spring. So if you're familiar with address controller and get mapping, those are the same, right? Or similar? You can also write HTTP client. Uh, so, if you're familiar with uh, OpenThing uh, from Spring Cloud, uh, this will be similar. Uh, again, the difference is when this is going to be implemented. So, this client, you can see, is an annotation or an interface. So, Micronaut will generate uh, the implementation at build time. And let me tell you another thing. Um, if you're used to Spring or Jakarta E or other frameworks where you know they have to to do random generation of of proxies to implement your uh, you know to add support for the the annotations uh, you're adding to your source code, um, when you have an exception, you'll see the stack trace is like a huge right because uh, there's many things that get generated at runtime and don't really belong to your uh, to your application. And now IDEs have become like smarter to hide those parts which are not really part of your application, uh, but still these stack traces are huge. But the Micronaut, you, have, you will have like tiny uh, stack traces because uh, uh, you know, everything is uh, generated at build time. In terms of messaging, well, there's uh, support for producers and consumers in different technologies. There is a data access solution that we will see in the demo uh, called Micronaut Data. It is equivalent to, my, uh, to Spring Data, uh, if you will. Uh, so um, supports a variety of uh, technologies. So this is an example. Uh, it's based on the repository pattern, uh, pretty much like Spring Data. 
but once again, the difference is uh, when is this going to be generated, uh, which in this case is a build time, not at runtime. Uh, there is a, like a whole security solution uh, as part of the framework um, with many things supported. I wouldn't go into the details. Um, and then like a few other things like, uh, I don't know, distributed tracing, service discovery, distributed configuration, monitoring, uh, cache support, uh, et cetera. How do you get started? So there are several ways. Uh, one is to go to launch.micro.io and then you can select the, like, the language, um, uh, version, build tool, uh, testing framework, Java version, etc. And then you can select the features. So you can say, I want to, uh, to, um, to generate an application with Graal VM support because I will generate uh, native images uh, and uh, security because I want to secure my endpoints and uh, uh, micro data JDBC because uh, I want to store some data. And the application will generate like, you know, the dependencies, configuration files, everything you need to get started. There is a CLI counterpart, uh, if you prefer that. So that's also an option, but uh, the result will be the same. Uh, if you use IntelliJ IDEA, that's also an option. Um, it is like the, a different UI, but uh, the, like the background, the, the backend is, is literally the same. And also, uh, there is one extension for Visual Studio Code called um, what is the name? It's a Graal VM extension pack, which include, uh, includes micro tools, uh, which again allows you to, to generate uh, a micro application. Um, I've got a demo, but I will leave the demo for the, for the end, because uh, there's another topic I would like to talk to you about. So Graal VM, who've heard about Graal VM? Who's using Graal VM in production? That's, that's, that's an interesting uh, use case. Uh, so yeah, this is like, you know, like a hot topic. Uh, everybody's talking about GraalVM. Uh, but if you st uh, are still like, uh, using it, uh, actually, but I think it's a matter of time. Uh, so for those who never heard about GraalVM, uh, GraalVM, GraalVM is many things. It is uh, like really famous for, for point uh, number two. Uh, but uh, you can think of GraalVM as a drop-in replacement for OpenJDK. Um, and it can also be used for producing native binaries of a Java application. Those are the, the, the options. And then it supports like, uh, um, you know, many other languages. Uh, so you can write uh, polyglot applications on the, on the, like truly polyglot applications on the JVN that have, can also be compiled to, to native images. So those are like the different uh, paths you have with GraalVM. One is use it as a, as a JDK. Uh, it just works, right? And there are some benchmarks indicating that uh, it will actually be faster than uh, OpenJDK in certain conditions. But you know who benchmarks are, so you can trust them or not. Um, and the, the other alternative, the other path, is to produce an, a native image uh, of a Java application. And, uh, well, it's like a pretty complicated way they do that, but essentially they like, um, start from the main class of the application and then traverse um, you know, all the code points of your application to, you know, to unroll it and, and produce a, a self-contained binary that works only on the operating system where it has been built. So, uh, you know, you're on Linux and you generate a native image, uh, it'll be a native image for Linux only. So, the, the thing is that, um, you know, a native binary is, uh, like, ridiculously fast. Like, um, uh, if you think about like a, like a modern Java application, and we will say that, but uh, you know, with a top spec laptop, uh, you can get a micro application to start in like um, I don't know 400 milliseconds, something like that, in JVM mode, uh, and most of that is, is essentially the JVM 
uh, doing its business, right? So, so like uh, having to create the process and uh, allocate the memory, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you convert that into native image, you can get as low as six milliseconds, which is a ridiculously small amount. Uh, for the memory footprint is, is something similar. So, so like in, in JVM mode, uh, you can get a micromet application from, I don't know, 60 to 100 megabytes. Uh, but if it were a, a native image, it can go as low as, I don't know, dozen, dozens of, uh, of megabytes. Um, and you get that without the performance penalty, which is the key, right? Because uh, if it were that the case, it, you know, it wouldn't be really interesting. Uh, so you can see this um, scenario like a great candidate for, for a certain type of deployments like serverless. Um, now, you've heard probably heard about the GraalVM support in, in other frameworks, in other technologies, like all the major frameworks, Java frameworks support GraalVM, but there is something unique uh, for the combination of Micronaut and GraalVM, and is that they are both um, developed and maintained at Oracle Labs, right? So uh, Micronaut is going to be the best integration you're gonna get uh, with GraalVM, uh, it is the best integration today, the best experience, and uh, it will likely be the same for the future. Um, and there is a, another reason why this is true, and is that because of why I explained at the beginning, like, uh, you know, how Micron works, uh, Micron is ready for GraalVM native image since day one with, without, you know, doing anything special. So, um, it's not that GraalVM doesn't support reflection or you know, dy dynamic class loading or proxy uh, generation, so it does support that, but you need to tell them in advance, right? So there is like a configuration file uh, or several ones in GraalVM where you have to, to tell that. So frameworks who use, you know, who rely on you know, runtime, um, uh, runtime computation, uh, you know, for them, it was like, you know, impossible to, at the beginning, to, to get uh, um, something working on, on GraalVM. And then what they use now is an agent, you know, it's a Java agent that you run along your application and it'll detect the things you're using, the reflection calls you're making, the class that you're loading, and it will, like, speed the uh, configuration files for GraalVM uh, for you, uh, which is an advantage, right? But uh, uh, nothing of this isn't really necessary with, uh, with Micronaut. Uh, okay, mm, let's go to the demo. In the meantime, can I get some water, please? I don't know if someone from the organization hear me. Can you see uh, the font size is okay? Um, right, so the, what I have here is like a blank uh, application generated from, from a starter. So I've got a few additional dependencies like uh, Micronaut Data JDBC uh, and GraalVM. Uh, so what I get, uh, this is like the main entry class that is uh, similar to the one from Spring. Um, application configuration file with some defaults. Uh, we're using S2 for this example, um, and pretty much it. So we're gonna go and create uh, some code. Let me bring um, because I have a, like a cheat sheet. Merci beaucoup. Um, so let's create a simple entity class. I'm going to apologize um, 
in advance because uh, I'm using a Windows machine because uh, you know my laptop crashed and. And I'm still waiting for, for, for a replacement, so I got uh, this uh, Windows replacement from, from Oracle IT, uh, which is making my life miserable. So I really hope that you are with me in this pain. Um, so, so, yeah, so simple class will generate a few fields. And then put a few notations. Uh, so this is uh, at entity. I'm using uh, JPA with the Jakarta namespace. So nothing new under the sun here. And then let's generate a few things. Uh, first of all, Constructor, I only want those two fields here. And then get this for all. And then set it for the ID so that, so that Micronodata can set the ID when it's um, coming back uh, from the database. Now uh, let's generate a repository. Uh, in, this, in this case, it's going to be an interface uh, extending a CRUD repository of a, uh, this is the, like the entity class and the primary key class. And uh, let's put the annotation, JDBC repository with the dialect, come on. Dialect uh, S2. There we go. Uh, just by this, we get like you know, say five minute D count or blah blah blah. Like the crowd operations are coming from the interface, and I could uh, I could um, write my my own. Like for instance, I could I could write a query and say, for instance, um, bubble, well interface so iterable. It's the role of uh, team find all by name, sorted by name, string name, right? So um, I could write this, and based on the method name at build time, MyCannot will generate the query for you. It's magic. It's magic, isn't it? It's not magic because I'm telling you how it works, but it uh, looks like magic. Um, okay, I don't need that. So, um, so now let's write a controller. Team controller. And this is the like the path I'm gonna write here. Thames. And uh, I'm gonna copy one class so that we save some typing. Uh, this class here, I'm only using to like to insert some data when the application runs. Uh, for that, I'm I'm uh, like injecting the repository. Uh, so in this case, in this case, um, I'm using constructor-based injection. Uh, this is uh, JSR three three zero annotation at Singleton from from the Jakarta namespace, uh, and then there is like a lifecycle 
callback when the server is running, in which case I take the opportunity to, to insert a couple of um, entities on the database. Uh, so far so good? Yeah? Cool. So what I'm going to do now, if demo gods are with me, well, I actually I don't need um, anything big for this. So let me check um, the Java version I'm using. So I'm using GraalVM uh, 17 in this case. Um, but I'll, I'll use it in, in JVM mode. So I could run the application and then continue developing. Right, so in this case, it was close to one second. Uh, this is not a top spec uh, laptop. Uh, and still is one second, but including like, uh, um, you know, H2 initialization, uh, Hikari connection pool initialization, database creation, et cetera, right? So if you get like a, like a top MacBook Pro, this will be like uh, 500 milliseconds, something like that. Uh, we can uh, make a request to 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 to, to, um, to a endpoint. Uh, there's nothing because I didn't write anything, right? So let's do that. Let's do that. So uh, I'm going to declare a dependency on the repository. And then generate a constructor, right? So in this case, we don't even need uh, an annotation to, to tell Micronaut because it's the only constructor of the class. So Micronaut will figure out that the constructor is the only way to instantiate, um, you know, an instance of of uh, this class. So we'll, you know, we'll do what it takes to to you know to give you an instance of a theme repository. Um, and uh, let's write some some code like um, public uh, like a list method, right? Iterable of a team uh, find all, and then uh, this is simply return repo final, right? Um, semicolon. And then uh, this is uh, get. Um, uh, so the default path is slash. So this is under slash teams, slash. Uh, under the hood, um, the Migrant Maven plugin, uh, which I wrote, so, so it's like amazing. Um, no, I'm kidding, but uh, the Micro Maven plugin will detect that there's been a change on your application and it will restart. Uh, so we don't do hot reloading. Because, why? Because hot reloading is a mess, because you have to deal with class loaders and uh, uh, um, it's is, is terribly error prone and uh, there can be a million things that can go wrong. So when you have like a framework like this, which is starting so fast, why bother with uh, hot reloading? So we just simply kill the process and restart it. Uh, job done. So now if I make a request, um, uh, there we go. Couple of teams. Uh, I tell you, I'm, from, from, I'm coming from Madrid, so I am supporting Real Madrid in case there's any uh, potential doubt about this. So, so yeah. Benzema, Benzema is like uh, yeah, the best striker in history. Uh, great guy, yeah. Don't tell me about uh, Mbappé, please. So no, not now, not now, not Mbappé. Um, uh, what else? Um, let's do let's do a delete method, and uh, you will see why. So let's call this uh, public. In this case, I'm wrapping the return type in something called HTTP response. HTTP response. 
and then the bo the body it's going to be nothing delete by id and then i can say um final final long id and then um this is uh, at delete, and then we enter the path, which is slash, and then we use the URI uh, variable substitution. Um, do you see here ID and ID here? You see that? Uh, if I were to make a typo and save, this should blow up. Bang. It doesn't compile. Because we, we check that at the compile time. right? You will never get a runtime error because of that, because we check it. This is great, isn't it? Um, uh, you can tell I'm a little bit biased, but not too much. So what I'm going to do here is, um, what could I do? Like, for instance, I could tell if repo exists uh, by ID, um, then um, repo delete by ID, and then return uh, HTTP response uh, no content. Where are you? No content, Mr. No content. There you go. Otherwise, uh, we return not found. Not found. Right? So this is why wrapping something in HTTP is for when you want to control like the, the status code, the body, blah, 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 etc. Um, otherwise, you know, my current will figure out what it has to do. Like, you know, if I, if I return null here, it'll convert that uh, for you to, to 404. Uh, so there are like some same conventions for you. Uh, so let's try this out. This is running again. I'm compiling fine. So, I'm going to, um, I think I have this on my history. I'm going to delete Barcelona. Yeah. So easy. Now Real Madrid will win uh, all seasons. Um, what else? Uh, there's, there's another thing I want to show you. There's another thing I want to show you. Uh, and it's a native image, right? So, so let's cancel this. And then if I were to produce a native image out of this thing, um, which is um, MVM package, yeah. Command plus. Right, so this this command um, will will use um, uh, under the hood uh, a GraalVM Maven plugin. Uh, one thing which is worth mentioning is that uh, we are collaborating with VMware uh, with um, uh, many things. So, for example, the uh, the GraalVM build tools. A native field tools, which is called, is a joint effort between VMware and uh, Oracle Labs. Uh, so when you generate a native image with the Spring Native, uh, it will use the same uh, Maven plugin or Gradle plugin um, if, if that's what you're using. So this will take a few minutes, which I'm going to skip because um, I'm um, a smart speaker and um, have generated this uh, beforehand, hopefully. So let me make this bigger so you can see the magic. Twenty-five milliseconds. Wow. Uh, 
Uh, and not only is fast, but it also works, <laughs> right? <laughs> it also works, um, which is um, a big advantage. So, um, no, from the beginning, no. From here, please. Yeah, you can tell I'm like an advanced PowerPoint user. Uh, is there any question you may have? There's one over there. Uh, there's no mic, so just. The size, yeah, let's see that. Uh, the question was, uh, which is the size of the binary? And then, um, mm -mm. 80 megabytes. It's not really like a dependency optimized, so we could probably shave. A uh, few megabytes out of that, but uh, it's uh, it's okay, I think. No. Any other question? Can you speak louder? Is there a dependency for test? Like for test. Yes, uh, it's a good question. Uh, we can do that. The question was uh, whether there's any like dependency injection or like a facility for testing, uh, and the answer is there is. So, um, so there is an annotation called microtest. Uh, this annotation will uh, automatically spin. Uh, an instance of your of your application on a random port, and then you can use uh, dependency injection annotations. So you can inject your bin and do whatever you want. Uh, this is one huge advantage of Micronaut versus other frameworks. Um, I would say Quarkus has a similar advantage, uh, and is that uh, you know when using like an, you know an application we, which takes. I don't know, 10 seconds to start or 15 seconds to start. Like, you know, it's so annoying that uh, you just keep as much as you can uh, writing functional tests because uh, they are manageable, right? There's no way you, you're going to wait 15 seconds, 20 seconds each time you want to run a test. Uh, with uh, Micronaut, you can forget about that. So I've hardly written, you know, I do write unit tests sometimes when I write Micronaut applications. Uh, but uh, the, the thing is, you know, leverage that the framework is starting so fast and write as many functional tests as you can. Uh, and uh, you can do like inline bin definitions with the static classes. And uh, um, like, for instance, imagine uh, I wanted to test my, my controller so I could write an add client inside the test class and use it as an HTTP client for the uh, for the controller, and it works. Do you support Lombok? Lombok, yes. Lombok is supported, yes. Uh, it has to go first on the annotation uh, on the annotation processor side, a chain. Right, Lombok is also based on annotation processing, uh, so the you know the only trick is that it needs to go first, because otherwise Lombok will like uh, will mess the bytecode of what Micronaut has generated. Right, so Micronaut has to go uh, last, and anything else can go first, and it works. There are many people using it, and um, no issues so far. Yes, this is the declaration order. So actually, you know, you get that uh, for minutes. You get that um, if we go to micro launch. And then we say, I want Lombok. 
and uh, uh, let's include um, data GDBC to see another annotation processor. So Maven preview, and then if we see the pump generated, um, you know this guy here has to go first. Did he answer your question? Yeah? Which feature? Monitoring, yes. There is a, a management module. Um, so the same way you have like endpoints on Spring Boot, there are endpoints on, on Micronaut, and they can be exported to, to HTTP or JMX, or you can hook with Micrometer. Uh, there's extensive support for Micrometer, and um, yeah, that's uh, definitely monitoring support for that. Uh, one over there. I don't hear you at all. Sorry. The difference is. Uh, so as uh, the only difference is how you. It's a, at build time, right? But uh, at runtime, there shouldn't be any difference. The code, is, the code is the same, yes. The ah, the throughput. Yeah, uh, I, I think I have one slide about that. So the, the throughput is, um, it, it really depends because you know, a J, you know, a JBM can be warm up and uh, uh, it'll do better once it's warm and uh, so, so yeah, uh, I, I think, um, you know, most of the people agree that a JBM will have a like, slightly better performance, but it's so marginal that, uh, f mm, you know, if you have like a long running application, then um, probably JBM mode is, is fine. But uh, imagine you want to go serverless. And uh, so cold startup is, is like night and day with RAL VM, so that's a huge win. Or, or I don't know, in Kubernetes, when you have like a oops, rescale container or something like that, uh, it is much better when you have something which starts so, so fast. And uh, I don't think there is a performance penalty in the throughput. Significant, a significant one. There was another question there. Uh, Quarkus has taken a similar approach in many ways. There are a few differences in they don't use annotation processors, uh, and they they rely more on you know bytecode manipulations and and things like that. Uh, but uh, it's I could say that the the principles are similar, right? So they are so focused on performance and. Uh, Mm. To me, I think the big difference is that they um, they choose mm, you know the micro profile way, right? Uh, whereas Microsoft and Spring have like custom annotations which are not standard, right? So you could use you know instead of the add controller and add get, you could use JAX rest annotations. So we support that, uh, and again we do that with compile time mapping. Uh, of those annotations into the micro ones, so at you know at runtime everything looks like if it were micro annotations, and you don't notice any difference. Um, and uh, like I showed you uh, JPA, so so individually, uh, I think we support most, if not all, the micro profile uh, standards, but one which is CDI. And CDI has a problem, and is that by design it relies uh, a lot on reflection. And we don't want that. So there is an actually uh, an effort between uh, Oracle, VMware, and even Red Hat as well to to create a CDI light spec, which will allow the three frameworks to be based on 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 that. But that is like a, you know like a future work and uh, still under development. So 
Um, but I think that's uh, the, you know, what I would uh, differentiate um, between them and us. But it's a great fr uh, framework as well, I have to say. I really like it. No more questions? So I've got one final slide. Or two. Time's up, yeah, I know. Um, merci beaucoup. Uh, thank you very much. Muchas gracias.